Welcome to Bible Logos. I am Denise Deluge, your broadcast host. I'm here today to bring to you part two of the message, Work Your Slice of the Pie, by guest speaker, Pastor Jeff Heron of New Creation Church. Please remember to like and share this message on social media with your friends and family. All right, here we go with part two of Work Your Slice of the Pie. We don't have the capacity to have agape love in and of myself. As a matter of fact, I'll share this. There's something going on right now, and I really want to have this conversation with this guy. And that, oh my Lord, I want to have this conversation with him. But I know if I have this conversation with him, it's going to go all bad because I'm going to do Jeff, and I need to do God, Jeff. And so I need to make sure that my words are seasoned, that I speak life and not death. And so I'm accessing the Holy Spirit because I've been on pause for three weeks. Now, for about six years ago, oh, I would have went left on him. But like now, I'm accessing the Holy Spirit. We need to access the Holy Spirit because we don't have the capacity to be able to love agape style. We can love our families like we can love them with sacrifice. But people we don't really know, eh, you, you, you know, you can get it, you might not get it. And so we need to tap into that tool that God has given us. He's given us the counselor. That is the Holy Spirit. That's why we'll be able to do the things that God has called us to do. We don't have the capacity to love people unconditionally. Everything's got conditions on it. And that's what God is calling us to do. One of the things that we want to get to a point is, you guys, when you look at your mission statement, and I recommend that if you haven't looked at it, you might have perused it, you really want to look at it, because that is the vision of this church, the vision of this church. And one of the things about the vision of this church is, is that it was going to have change agents. What is a change agent? That's somebody who's changing a problem a different way than they used to. Look, I don't fish. I grew up in L.A. We went camping a couple of years ago, and I went fishing with some kids. I don't fish. And so they bought some bait and it was like, looked like green. It looked like slime or something. And they didn't have that in 1972. We had worms. That means is that we have to use different bait to lure people to Christ. We got to get creative. You can't use what you did in 1977 to try to win somebody into Christ in 2018. It ain't going to work. God has given you something, and he wants you to use the creativity to bring him to Christ. Let me give you an example. You guys have home groups, and that's a great thing. Home groups are great. And I see you on Facebook, and you guys, some of you guys' food is off the hook. But the food is, you know, the food is good. The fellowship is great. But the key is we need to start inviting our neighbors who don't know Christ. That's the purpose of the home group. It's cool to have your church family come because we develop a relationship and all that. But the key is we need to start bringing folks, our family members who ain't saved. They'll be more apt to come to the home group than they will come up in here. And so we need to stop worrying about them coming up in here and just get them into a place to go somewhere. And so now... When you have the home group, have the people that live in, you know, if you live in Antelope, have the people in Antelope come, you know, we eat and all that. But there's some people that you know absolutely in your neighborhood. There's some people in your life that you know absolutely that is not saved. And you have given up and thrown in the towel. Hey, man, how many of you guys got that? I want you guys to do me a favor. Think of somebody. It's a family member or a friend. You have done had the saints pray for them. You done called them. You done got them on the prayer line. You done laid hands on them. You are tired of them. You tried to help them. You loaned them money, and they keep doing the same thing. As a matter of fact, they're doing, they're doing what you used to do, but you no longer do. But we have thrown in the towel. I think that Jesus, he didn't throw in the towel on me when I was in my mess. So how dare we throw in the towel when they're in their mess? But here's, here's the thing. You get a unique opportunity to listen to them. And that is the number one point here is that we need to start hearing and listening to folks. We don't listen. We already go in with an agenda to shift something like we already have the answer. That might have been your answer, but that ain't for their answer. And so what God is telling us is that we need to listen with the ears of God because all them years you dismissed them, you didn't really hear where their pain was. Why you didn't hear them is because you already had the solution to their problem and the devil is a lie. And so what God is saying, we need to hear from God 
and start living it out because then you will have the patience. That little nugget you missed five years ago, they kept telling you the same thing, but you kept getting frustrated and you kept getting frustrated and calling them trifling. We all been trifling before. Don't act like you ain't been trifling. I was trifling last week. I don't know what you're talking about. God is calling us to a place, a place that we start hearing from God. And when we hear from God, then we will start listening to our people. We go out. You can go right now to Loaves and Fishes, out there in Loaves and Fishes on Saturday, and it's a great thing. You know, every, you go out there anytime between 7 o'clock in the morning, probably to 3 o'clock, everybody feed. And that's a good thing. But what we're really doing is we're putting a Band-Aid on it. We're not bringing anybody to Christ. We're just giving them some food. I remember years ago when we were at New Testament, and we would go out. I used to go out with the women's mission, and, you know, and we come back. Oh, we served 100 people. And, you know, we're sitting there celebrating, high-fiving like we did something. These people are still lost and getting ready to go to hell, and we over here celebrating about giving them some food for a day, a little meal. And that's what God is telling us. We need to do the full ministry of the gospel. Years ago, I went to this church. I ain't going to put a name on it. And I was sitting in the service, and they just, you know, did a donation of jackets. And they got thousands of them, a couple of thousand jackets. And, and the pastor got up, and he said, you know, we got new and lightly used jackets, and, and we ought to be up celebrating the Lord. And, I, you know, and everybody's clapping, and one guy starts running around the church. And then something hit me, because they were going to have a truck pick up those jackets, and they were going to take them to the people. And, and something hit me. I said, wouldn't a fool ministry of the gospel wouldn't it have been better if we took them since we gave the jackets and we go down to the place and give them to the people personally have some coffee have some chocolate put our arm around them while we're giving them a jacket and have a conversation wouldn't that look like the more full ministry of the gospel that's what God is called we got to get creative we got to get outside of ourselves and that's what God is calling us to do we need to make sure our motives are in order welcome back if you like what you've heard so far, tune in tomorrow for part three of the message, Work Your Slice of the Pie. Please remember to like and share this message with your friends and family. I am Denise Deleuze, and I want you to remember that the sower sows the word, and therefore it is with the same measure you meet that it shall be measured unto you again.